Hey everyone, welcome back to the Brad and Kyle channel and today we're going to be talking about practice and how you can make your practice sessions productive. Stay tuned. So when we talk about practicing bowling, um, it's something that everyone should be doing, but sometimes lacks structure. Um, so Brad, we're going to try to provide some structure to people, but kind of give an insight on what people's different opinions are about practicing and how that may differ depending on what level of bowling you're at. Yeah, we're going to give you guys five things that you can do in your practice session uh, at the end of the video that can make it a little more productive. But first I want to talk about just the overall idea of practice. I find it extremely fascinating to show up to PBA events in West Malott doesn't use the practice session before the event. And then you look at someone like our friend Verity Crawley, where she practices drills at home and she has these tools and she's got a fan in her living room and she uses to go through a pre-shot routine and she's very uh, dialed in on practice. And then you have some guys that are a mix and some guys that only practice for five minutes. And then our friend Brad Angelo said that the only ball that he, the most important ball that you can use is your eyeball and that he doesn't practice a whole lot. He just pays attention to ball motion. Uh, it's really fascinating to see all the different ideas come together. Uh, the most important thing is that you got to do what's best for you. You got to find the right mixture for you. If you're a guy that likes to spend hours in a bowling center practicing like I was, then that works for you. And you're definitely going to get better if you do that. Um, if you're the kind of guy that if you practice for two hours, you get burnt out and you actually feel like you regress a little bit, well then back off a little bit uh, and then go at your own pace. But it's definitely from the the journey of becoming a really good bowler, you have to do what's best for you. And some, for some people, that's a ridiculous amount of practice. And for some people, that's very little practice. I also, I also think to add to that, that at some point to be a really good bowler, you do have to put in those like incredibly insane amount of hours. And once you develop your skills to a certain level, then you can kind of pick and choose because you've refined your craft so much that you understand your practice has also become more efficient. You're like, okay, this works for me. Mm -hmm. I know if I work on this, I'm going to stay very sharp with my game and I can kind of leave this other stuff to the side. But in order to become really good, I think everyone's had that phase where they just bowled all day, every day, all the time. Yeah, you're right. In order to get the knowledge of knowing what works for you and what doesn't work for you, you got to put in the hours. You know, what's that 10,000 hour rule in order to become an expert? Yeah. 10,000 hours. Like, Literally, we have spent our entire lives in a bowling center uh, just practicing away, and it, it worked for us. So if you're a youth bowler out there that wants to become a really good bowler and you're young and you've got the time, I'm perfectly for you spending a lot of hours in a bowling center just working on your craft because that's going to pay dividends. You are definitely going to get better, and if you do it at a younger age, then you're getting a head start into the game. So now let's, let's dive into a structured practice that someone watching this video can take to a bowling center and really help them out. Okay, so five, we're, we're gonna give you five things. Uh, if you're walking into a bowling center and you've got an hour or two just to get there and practice, instead of just, you can mindlessly throw shots. You can just sit there and throw shots for two hours, but is that really helping you? Like, is that putting you in a good mindset for competition? Is that really making progress on certain aspects of the game? Uh, maybe some days and maybe some days not. So having a structured practice can be beneficial. The first thing into a structured practice that we're gonna give, and I know we spoke about it a lot, is the no-step drill. Uh, that's literally, it, it could be your first shots of the practice. For you, part of your warm up. you grab your ball, you walk up to the approach, you just take it, you swing it, you don't take a step, and you just throw the ball. Uh, it's very simple. You take all the other elements of the approach out of the, out of the play, your first four steps aren't even there. All the steps aren't even there. You're literally just throwing it. And what happens is, is it kind of makes you focus on the swing uh, and the, the, the path of the ball. Like that's all that's moving. So you can feel your release very well. You can feel where the ball goes very well. It's just very basic, very simple. Something just to kind of get the, the mind and the body flowing yeah. and some feel about the swing. And we'd like you to do about 10 reps of the no-step drill. Now after you go to the no-step drill, we're gonna move into the full approach, but not fully. We want you to do about five to 10, 50 to 80% shots. We don't want you going up there and starting right away, throwing it as hard as you can with as many reps as possible. We wanna warm up. This is more for precaution, injury prevention, and also just getting the body acclimated 
to what you're about to do. So five to 10, basically warm up shots where you're getting nice and loose and getting ready to throw game time shot. And actually to say something else about that, I think a lot, the, the people who put a lot, I was one of those guys that put a lot of pressure on myself. And sometimes when you're practicing and you're working very hard, you get like really tense. And doing those 50% to 80% shots kind of allows you to have this more kind of relaxed mindset going into the practice session. Because if you go into the practice session stressed and you want to get better and you're just tense, then it's going to be hard for you to really execute correctly. So having those 50% shots just kind of brings, kind of relaxes your mind a little bit that you're just warming up. Uh, and getting into the flow of things. Absolutely, so next thing we're gonna do is a drill that we've talked about um, previously on the channel and it's gonna be the seven arrows drill. And we want you to throw five to 10 shots from each arrow. So you start with the first arrow on the lane and you're just trying to get lined up throwing shots up first arrow. Then after you throw about five to 10, move to the second arrow and so on. This is gonna help you build versatility and be comfortable playing any part of the lane. Now, we realize that you may not be able to strike from uh, each arrow depending on what oil is out there, but that's okay. That's the purpose of the drill, to get you outside of your limits and test yourself. And that way, if you do see something anywhere remotely close to that, you're ready, but also you're learning how to manipulate the ball. And that's at the end of the day, what we really wanna to try to focus on in practice is you building yourself to be able to manipulate the ball any which way that you want to as a bowler. Yeah, if you bowl a lot, you're gonna find yourself in a lot of uncomfortable positions. That's kind of what bowling is. is you know, it's not, it's pretty rare that you're just dialed in and everything's working correctly. A lot of times you're- Always adjusting. It, you're always adjusting. So having some kind of uncomfortable feeling during practice, if, if playing on the first arrow isn't correct, well, okay, keep doing it. Uh, because there's gonna be times in your bowling career where you're just really uncomfortable, and those times that you worked on in practice that something that would, you wouldn't normally do is really gonna come into play. Going even further than that, this is my favorite drill, the fourth one, um, because I think one thing that I've realized since bowling on tour is creativity is so fun to watch, and the best bowlers in the world are the best at it. They just get really creative, and they're not doing the same thing over and over again. They're, they're changing it up, they're switching it up, depending on the oil and the balls they throw and the centers they throw, and they're using just techniques to just create different things, right? So this next drill, I want you to try and leave every single pin outside of the head pin. You know, I mean, you can, but it's going to be hard to leave the head pin. It, it's going to be hard to leave the head pin. But, but still, if you want to challenge yourself, do it. And maybe the five pin. But at least the back. Bro, I just left the five I pin know. like <laughs> four videos ago we shot. Yeah, I know. That's because you don't have any hand. <laughs> uh, but at least the back row plus the, plus the four pin. Try and leave a ten pin. Try and leave a nine pin. Try and leave an eight pin, seven pin, four pin, six pin, two and three. Um, I like how you went out of order there. I was yeah, like, I know, <laughs> I'm just going around the, the rack. <laughs> It's like, uh, let's leave the four and then the nine and then the two and then the six. <laughs> what? <laughs> so what this does is it makes you get creative. Okay, what do I have to do to leave a ring 10? Okay, well, what if I just try and do this a little bit more? How do I go from leaving a 10 pin to a four pin? Uh, how do I leave that seven pin? It really makes you get creative with the angles that you use and it gets your brain working in a different way. You're not just trying to strike anymore. You're actually trying to get creative in how to leave these single pins, which is the exact mindset that you get in when you bowl at a high level. Yeah, I think that drill teaches you two very important things like Brad was just expressing is A, the it teaches you the, yeah, the creativity of trying to manipulate your ball. And again, that's what we want to stress. You're going to have to learn how to manipulate your ball in different ways than just simply throwing a strike. Also, you're learning the causation of why you leave certain things. So for instance, if you're trying to ring 10 and you figure out how to ring 10, well, you realize now that if you accidentally do that in competition, well, you know exactly why you rang 10 and then you just gained all that knowledge. So doing that drill really allows you to think outside the box because Yes, our goal is to strike, but at the end of the day, our goal is to learn how to manipulate the ball to, to, to figure out how to strike. And if we can learn how to manipulate the ball the best to the best of our abilities, then we can really elevate our game to the next level. And it's hard. It's going to be and it's gonna be Yeah, it's going to be extremely <laughs> difficult. Don't expect to run through it easy. It would take us all the time, like all, all day to do that at times. There was a time in Columbus where Brad Andrews was like, in practice session, try to leave a four pin and Kyle and I spent like an hour trying to leave a four pin and we couldn't. So it's, 
it's really fun. It, it's something a little bit different and it, it gets your brain going in a creative way. And then to end the practice session, very simple. We want to do about 10 to 15 minutes of spare practice. Now, I'm not, it, I would suggest that you guys pick spares that you struggle with. So if you're solid on the 10 pins, maybe you don't spend as much time on that. Maybe you have to work on left side spares, but use this time to shoot spares that are more of your weakness than your strengths. And then because guys, I know spare shooting is not fun. It's daunting. It sucks, <laughs> but you have to do it you to be an elite level some, player. You, you got to make the spares. So that's a practice regiment, guys. Uh, we'll actually post the whole regiment in the description. Uh, take that. I hope that it improves your game. Uh, let us know how it goes, what successes you had with it, uh, and we'll see you guys next time. All right, hey everyone, it's me, Kyle, from Brad and Kyle. If you guys want to check out our membership, we're giving coaching all the time. We have exclusive videos. Click the link in the description, check it out. We give a free trial. So guess what? You can either sign up and you can try it out for free. And if you don't like it, you can leave and it didn't cost you a single dollar or you can stay and have a good time with us. So check it out. We'll see you later.